thank you so much for the time which is given to me for giving a presentation about the relationship between dogs and humans. You know, as you know, everywhere that you can find humans, you can uh, you can find and figure out some dogs as well. And uh, maybe there's a secret behind that. Why don't you can find other animals uh, uh, living with, for example, humans? And you can see that humans can share their house and share even their beds with these sorts of animals. Maybe they have some special skills or they can read the feelings of people more easily in comparison to other animals. And lots of experiments and research were conducted by some uh, researchers and some, I don't know, scientist people, scientists or something like this and some people like that. And one of them was that uh, some researchers uh, found out that when humans, for example, get angry or get happy or cheerful, there would be some gestures and some special responses on their face, faces. And the result is that um, the gestures could be found at first on the left side of your uh, the faces of uh, human spaces. And that was one of the great points. And they tried to follow the movement of the dog's eyes when they are looking at humans and when they are realizing the senses or let's say the feelings of humans. According to the movie, movies and uh, some uh, records uh, which were done by uh, scientists, the scientists realized that dogs try to turn their eyes towards the left side of the uh, left, left side of the face and uh, the human's faces at first it means that they know that at first they should uh, find out some of the feelings and some of the sentiments of humans on the left side of their faces and but they do not react like this when they are in front of other dogs or in front of other animals and that was one of the interesting points that uh, could cast light on one of the secrets that why dogs could have a uh, really great uh, relationship with uh, humans. Another point was about their language. I mean, they, bark, they try to bark a lot. And every bark, according to the frequency and the intensity of the sounds, could convey a, a special message. Uh, they gathered lots of dogs with their owners, and they conducted another research, and... Uh, the owners claim that they can understand their dog's messages according to the box. So they kept their uh, dogs far away, the owners, and they try to uh, convey some messages to the dogs. For example, they keep them, uh, they kept them hungry, or for example, they, when the dogs were facing some strangers or I don't know, frightened or something like this, and they recorded all of the sounds. And when they play those sounds to the owners, the owners realized exactly what the feelings of the dogs were. And that was another uh, interesting point or attractive points about communication between dogs and humans. And another point which merits consideration is about a specific hormone which is called oxytocin. You know, mothers, uh, when they are uh, breastfeeding their child, oxytocin would be releasing their bodies. And as a result, they can communicate with the infants or children or babies more easily and perfectly. The same uh, hormone could be released in people's bodies when they are communicating with the, uh, with the dogs. And that was another uh, interesting point about uh, this secret. Besides all of what uh, I said, uh, Dogs can develop some special skills. For example, when you point out, uh, point out uh, at a specific point, they try to follow that point. This feature cannot be found in all of the animals easily. And that was one of the interesting points and about dogs. And, and also, uh, dogs can realize some objects according to the, their pictures. I mean, they can develop a 3D imagination according to a 2D picture. That was one of the interesting and enticing points about these animals and uh, another some groups of scientists tried to understand the ancestors of dogs and they knew that the ancestors of ancestors of dogs were wolves they are uh, these two sorts of animals are 99.8 person gen genetically similar but there are some differences for example they try to take care or look after a wolf from 
the time that it was uh, an infant. But with the passage of time, they couldn't take, take care of that animal in a house because it showed some, uh, that, animal sh that animal showed some feelings, some, uh, and it was not tame at all. So uh, another reason for having a good communication between animals, these uh, dogs and humans, is about the, their tameness. And also, uh, as a last point that I could mention, is that uh, some of the doctors try to f find out some of, the, uh, some of uh, the activities of people's brains according to some uh, MRI or some scans. And they realize that uh, in the orbit front of the uh, orbit, uh, orbital frontal of cortex in your brain, I mean, a part of your brain which is situated uh, upwards your eyebrows, there's a part which could be activated when you're, uh, for example, facing a baby or infant. And that part cannot be, uh, cannot be affected or cannot be activated when you're looking at the adult person. The same scenario happens when you look at dogs. And, and I mean, they are cute enough, similar to infants. And that could be another reason which could back up this idea that there is a great relationship between these type, these types of animals, I mean, dogs and humans. Thank you so much for the time which, yeah, which, is, uh, which has been given to me.